Good morning, friends. Stephen Burnett with Israeli News Live. And, uh, you know, I've got some, you get all kinds of uh, comments, especially folks, if you do a little bit of background about who they are, you know what community they're from. And they can be quite rude when it comes to asteroids and people, but there have been people that uh, in sincerity have been asking as far as any updates that I have on that. And yes, I did. I did uh, speak again with uh, our Pentagon source about this, especially because the Pentagon source had never said to me what would be in September other than the people of this world will know that we are in serious trouble come September. Uh, there was no specification as to, as of that. My FEMA engineer, he did though, however, uh, as well as uh, one of the contractors that uh, I know personally that works with the Pentagon, um, both spoke about being that we would begin to get hit by asteroids in September and that it would slowly increase uh, through the end of the year. And then going into next year, especially around March of April, we would really be getting hit pretty hard. Now, the contractor that I know uh, is in touch with generals and they spoke about asteroids the size of basketballs but you have to remember everything I'm telling you on this this is nothing to do with prophesying or or even predicting this is intel that we get that we try to share with you uh, the best that we know how but on both of the individuals there uh, Pentagon uh, contractor as well as our uh, FEMA engineer it seemed to be a far more doom and gloom, the type of scenario that, that, that we would imagine our, in our minds. But um, we've just got here to September, and a lot of people, because uh, there had been publicly spoken of, of a September 1st asteroid, automatically assumed that we were talking about that. We didn't have any specific asteroids whatsoever that we talked about. Um, but I'm going to go into what was shared, what, what I, because I, I wanted to see from my own Pentagon source, is there something similar to that and uh, what the other two sources were saying uh, on this. But before I do, let me point out a couple of things to you. This article just came out. NASA plots three potential impacts of asteroids aimed at Earth before the election day. All right. Now, the article, I didn't see where the article really um, claims what those what those uh, dates are other than no, November 2nd. Everybody knows about November 2nd. I've even said to you that a very top source, and I can't say where from, but very top source uh, is speaking about there is a lot of chatter going on amongst politicians on the left and as well as some uh, some rogue Republicans that are willing to do some sort of um, event that would, uh, that would make it look as if this asteroid caused it, and that would be possibility of a massive earthquake, possibility of disruption of satellite system, communication systems, or power grid, or a number of other options. Nothing, though, was set in stone on that. So again, you're dealing with intel, and when you deal with intel, things can change. you got to keep that in mind. But uh, I was told, though, that the, the asteroid, will most of it will burn up. It is sizable, but most of it will burn up in the atmosphere. Uh, and as it says here, uh, or not in this article, but another article, it talks about how that it, would, that it will not be a deep impact asteroid. All right. So that's just to kind of set the stage there. But I want to bring out a point here. And this is something that is very much worth noting that a lot of people are overlooking. And that is, as you look at this graph right here, these are near-Earth objects that are being tracked by NASA. Now, none of these uh, objects that I have highlighted will be too close to the Earth. They are what they call lunar distances, the LD, in the middle of your screen there, 4.92. So they're nearly five times further away from the moon than, 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 uh, than what they normally are. But these asteroids, though, if you'll notice, 2020, 
These have just been discovered. But these are not small asteroids. 27 meters by 60 meters. I mean, this is nearly the size of a football field. 19 meters by 42 meters. Well, that's half the size of a football field. 10 meters by 23 meters. So, and this is nothing uncommon here as far as recently. Maybe, maybe historically it's the case as well. But these are some pretty doggone big asteroids, and they're just now discovering that they're considered near-Earth objects? What, have they not been in the orbit before or something? What's the deal with this? There's another one down here as well. Right? And, and when are they coming by the Earth? September the 8th, September the 11th. Two are going to come by on September 8th. One is going to come by on September 11th. And then if you drop down a little bit further, another one that was just discovered as well, this one right here. It's going to come by September 14th. And it is bigger than a football field. A lot bigger than a football field. So why are these suddenly just now being discovered? Could it be because we really are going into the edge of an asteroid belt or already in the edge of an asteroid belt? According to the Pentagon source I have, yes, we entered into that asteroid belt on June the 20th. Excuse me, not June 20th, in June. He didn't say a date in June. And let me just see real quick if I, yeah. But he did, as I said, though, he had said to me there would be a lot of changes going on, especially in weather. And he said that was because the Earth is absorbing so much radiation. He talked about the asteroid belt, but he never made the asteroid belt uh, he didn't go into the details of when the asteroids would start striking. He just said, come September, that we're going to know we're in deep trouble here on the Earth. Well, here's the USGS uh, earthquake map. And I refreshed this this morning. Have you ever seen so many earthquakes going off at one time? I mean, this is unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. Just a new one just popped up since I turned it on this morning. 4.8 in the North Indian Ocean. But look at a lot of these. A lot of these sixes. 6.3 in the Philippines. And you really kind of have to blow up big to go down here to, to get in behind this other earthquake here. And that was a 6.2 down in Vanuatu. Not mentioning all these other ones that you know could be aftershocks. 5.7, 5.0. But they're just everywhere. Japan, 5.1. Look at all these here around Alaska and the Keys off of Alaska. You have four across Alaska, different places as well. Okay. And I was told that we're going to see all kinds of earthquakes. I was told that we're going to see massive winds, hurricanes, storms like we've never seen before. And that's exactly what we've been seeing. All right. And Texas has been getting a lot of earthquakes to the left there. And then there's also been an uptick over here in Bolivia and, of course, off the coast of uh, Chile, 4.4, 4.6, 4.1. That was maybe just aftershocks from the ones the other day that were popping off over there off of Chile. But still, though, I hear another one. Another one just happened here around Haiti. A lot of quakes are happening over. Sorry, not Haiti, but Puerto Rico. Look at all the earthquakes here. In Puerto Rico. I hadn't even zoomed in on it, but this is like nuts. Right? 2.7. All of them are small. They look like all like twos, things like that, and they are. And you know, they had one the other day they didn't even mention on the USGS map, which was really kind of odd. I got an email, but right there in southern Alabama in Atmore, which Atmore is right in this area right here. They had a 3.8 earthquake. 3.8. Why USGS didn't log that in I, is really beyond me. Not sure why on that. But at any rate, this is this is just what I'm saying. There's just earthquakes are going on everywhere right now. And of course, the storms. We're seeing record breaking. You hear about record breaking storms on hurricanes, things like that, right? So these are some of the reasons why. Um, we have been concerned about these things. 
Now, you have to understand, though, before I go into what our source is, is saying to us about this and our update on this, one person had made the comment, and I did respond to him. Uh, a lot of people have uprooted their families as a result of the information I've given. And here it is. We just got into September, and they're already starting to say, and you've lied to the people, given them false information. I was only told that September, you would know we're in serious trouble. And the amount of earthquakes we have and the storms and the Dracio storm, by the way, the Dracio storm, there's many more coming just like it, as I was also told while I was on the phone the other day. Many more just like it are coming. Um, the, the, the weather events is more than likely what that source meant by September. But my the, the one source that I have that is a contractor for the Pentagon, he said that the, what would be that we would know we were in big trouble is that in September, never said when in September, but in September, people will be able to see with the naked eye what they have been hiding from us for a long time by turning off certain satellites, observatories, things like that, that you'll be able to see it with the naked eye. Um, and he was talking about the Planet X system. And he said, if you don't see it in September, then they know that you'll see it by the spring of the year. So he said it was believed that it would be able to be seen by the naked eye come September. That was his point on it. Uh, but nowhere did we say in September that we were going to have a catastrophic um, uh, asteroid hit the Earth. The FEMA engineer, he spoke of, though, September, we would begin to start seeing asteroids come in. All right. So in light of all that information, as I spoke with uh, my, my source in the Pentagon there, he said to me, because I asked him specifically, I told him what FEMA people were saying and what was his understanding on this information. And he told me, he said, Stephen, he said, as you know, uh, I've shared with you that we entered into this, this asteroid belt, if you want to call it, this cloud. It's actually a cloud. But he said in, re in relation to Planet X, he said this is part of what we would call the bands of Planet X. And he said, when I say that, you have to understand that, he said, imagine Planet X like a hurricane and that the planet itself of Planet X is like the eye of the storm. Uh, he said, we are in the far furthest outer, outer reaches, the bands of debris that is a part of that entire system. And he said, Planet X, the eye of the storm, is, is approximately two years away, around 2023, uh, which may be actually more than two years away. But he said, that's when we will actually enter into that, what you would call the eye of the storm. He said, that's when it will be extremely bad. He said, your legs will be knocked out from under you. It'll be that bad. But he said, we are entering into that first band. And he said, if you can picture it like this, he said, that band, the outer edges of that band, he said, are small stones in it. And he told me it takes a tremendous amount of energy to be able to detect those stones. So he said, we're not able to detect everything, especially when they're small ones. We don't detect them that easily. It has to be big stones. He said, as we enter into it, he said, we will be getting hit more and more by small debris. He said, in fact, we are being hit by that small debris already. He said, but most of it is small enough that it just burns up into the atmosphere and you don't see it in the first place. Uh, he says, just like, you know, meteorites or something coming down uh, and nobody just, you just see a little firework show type thing. Nothing big enough to cause any significant damage. He said, but I would agree with this FEMA source to some degree that as you move, as we move deeper into it, and as the months go by, yes, it's going to get larger and larger stones. And here and there, you're going to start seeing bigger things hitting the earth. Nothing, though, as he said, that would be planet annihilators. These are just small stones. You'll get impacts here and there that are going to happen. Um, now, I also, as I mentioned, I had the other source that talked about November 2nd. Uh, that we would have that one there, but it would not be that big of a deal. Well, my FEMA source also agreed with that. He said that one should 
for the most part, it'll burn up. But he said it won't be as the size of what even hit Russia. He said we'll get a good bang out of it when it enters the atmosphere, but it, nothing much more than that. So he agreed with that. Then we began to he began to discuss though going into next year because I said FEMA my FEMA contact he told me that come around March or April of next year things are going to really heat up with these asteroids like showers of rain of, of asteroids he said well he said there's a good possibility that that is more accurate as well because this one band the deeper we get into it the larger the rocks will get and he said many of them we've not even been able to detect, detect yet we just know they are there so in fact i think if you check our patreon account i think i told you why on patreon why they know they're there but so things are going to heat up next year. But there's another thing you need to understand as well. And this is something that I'm not going to speak about it out loud here on here. I'm, Insight. This was something that I posted over on, uh, or this being posted this morning over on um, our Patreon account there. Uh, a whistleblower that comes out talking about, well, you can see right there on the screen what it's talking about. Um one of the main reasons why we had chose to relocate, of course, the asteroids was part of it, but our biggest concern was forced these things right here. And the fact that we're going to have unrest, we're going to have uh, in November, we're going to see the entire, it's going on a complete lockdown all over again. They're going to say that the, the, the numbers have spiked severely bad and they got to lock the whole country down again. Uh, we wanted to be a, as far away from this situation as we possibly could. So that was one of the major reasons why we had chose to do what we did. But to, to speak to that, that comment about people that have uprooted their lives and have moved, I can't say as I blame them. You know, I take these things very seriously myself. But when it comes to asteroids, things like that, there's there's nowhere you can go that's a safe place, in my opinion, other than I've been told that because of the earthquakes. By the way, I just wanted you to see this. That's why I popped over on this here, this article right here uh, that was sent to me. The USS Liberty. Never forget the Israel's attack on the USS Liberty. This is uh, you can actually get a previewing of this. I think it's sixty dollars uh, over on True News. Uh, Rick Wiles and his team put this documentary together here. It's an extremely good documentary, and it's also going to be coming out in DVD. Uh, I encourage you to get it because you need to know the truth on that. But anyway, going back, um, because of all the things that are happening and going on, earthquakes, things like that, forced, you know what, we felt it necessary to relocate and get as rural as we possibly could. Because I'm not going to take any of those things. I will not take a vaccine. My family will not take one. And not to mention we've got earthquakes, asteroids, and everything else. I don't want to be on the coastline either. You know, I can't say there's going to be tidal wave hit Florida and wipe it out. But uh, that is a big concern of ours. So we've taken this very seriously ourselves. So... You know, for those that have taken those things serious to heart, there's more than just asteroids that would cause anyone to want to relocate. Um, and by far more. And it's not earthquakes, it's not hurricanes, it's not, you know, the mere fact that they want to do this right here to you and force it should be reason enough to want to be in a place where you could protect your family. Uh, but that's my opinion on that. At any rate, I'll leave you with these things here. Also, the Russian Foreign Ministry, uh, Sergei Lavrov, visited Syria this morning. Uh, and it's very interesting. He hadn't been there since 2012. And I'm wondering kind of like, what, what are they doing there? I actually put a comment on the Twitter post that they were in. Uh, let's see, uh, not that one, but a different one. And I questioned, uh, my question to them was, how come you're not defending Syria? Okay, Russia, they say, made a major turn in the war. And I agree they did in 2015. But they're not defending Syria against aggression from Israel. They're not defending Syria against uh, even uh, the United States' presence there. You know, the U.S. is not officially at war with Syria, but yet we went in there and took all their oil. 
and Trump calls it the spoils of war. I didn't know that we were officially at war with Syria, but we sure did take the time to go in there and steal everything. And I guess maybe Russia would say, well, they're at war with Iran. Well, Iran's your ally as well, and you still don't care about that either. Interesting. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Have a blessing day.